I talked to y'all about Aladdin the Animated Series, so many of you wrote in to say that you loved that episode where Al and the group met Disney's demigod Hercules. But that wasn't an Aladdin episode. It was from Hercules the Animated Series. But it got us thinking that we need to spend more time with Herc, Hades, Phil, and the rest of the Hercules crew while he was still training to be a hero. What's up guys, I'm Chris Carr, and today I'm talking to you about Hercules the Animated Series. Before we head over to Prometheus Academy, I want to give a shout out to our amazing super nerd sponsor of the day, Charles Sheed. Thanks to Patreon heroes like Charles, we get to keep binging cartoons and chatting with you guys about them. If you want to chip in, head over to our Patreon page and see if a donation tier works for you. We'll thank you with shout outs, behind the scenes looks, and other cool stuff. If you aren't flush with cash, that's okay. Liking, sharing, and subscribing are great ways to help our channel. Now, let's get to the heroics. Disney's Hercules the Animated Series premiered in 1998. Based off the full-length feature, this series isn't a true prequel, more of a midquel. Everything that takes place on the show is during the Hercules song One Last Hope while Herc is training with the Latidis. This is a super cool idea. I mean, we're covering two years of Herc's life in that song. The show allows us to see more specifics of his training, the hero code, and flesh out a lot of the gods and goddesses who were basically just set dressing in the film. Well, Poseidon suggested Zeus level an earthquake on Macedonia. <laughs> Nutty Poseidon, cat is too much. We see Herc as he's not only training to be a hero, but also as he's in one of the most treacherous arenas of all time, high school. Ooh, high school sucked. Now, as fun as this premise sounds, the show is so filled with inconsistencies that some fans don't even view the show as canon. I must have blocked a lot of this out, or I just didn't care as a kid, but rewatching it now, there are a lot of errors to unpack. First of all, Hercules meets a ton of mythological heroes like Jason, Theseus, a lot of yeses, and Achilles. Well, you know, I already have a trainee and all. You know, this is very sudden. I wouldn't be what I am today if not for this, may I say, beautiful goat man. Phil told Herc that all of these dudes were dead. Now, honestly, this is something that I think is a little easier to let slide. Hercules the Animated Series takes Greek myths and rewrites them with Herc thrust into them. For example, he tries driving Apollo's chariot and bringing up the sun, failing abysmally. In mythology, this would have been Apollo's own son attempting to do the task. Hercules, drive my solar chariot? <laughs> I knew you'd volunteer. But the sun... He'd love to do it. Obviously, the cartoon film wasn't a stickler for facts. Hera isn't trying to kill Herc all the time, and Herc didn't murder his wife and children. It's just his kids. Sometimes it's his wife, Megara, as well. And Megara's an actual princess in Greek mythology, too, so she is a Disney princess. And in this movie, they obviously gloss over that because what a bummer ending. Hey, I'll live with you. I'm going to be mortal now. I lost my mind, and I'm going to murder you and our babies. It's fair to take some liberties. These are myths anyway. It's not like when you watch Anastasia and they're like, oh no, the Romanovs were mostly killed by magic. It's just really something that makes you go, hey, I thought that dude was dead. But we can give Phil the benefit of the doubt and assume that Seder Danny DeVito is dramatic and these heroes were simply dead to him. Every single one of those bums let me down, flatter than a discus. None of them could go to distance. All right, here's the big one that we can't ignore though. Hades knew Herc was alive. Unlike the film where Hercules is assumed dead until he's an adult, Hades is very aware that teen Herc is kicking it and training to be a hero. Sorry I got you into this, and I'm proud of you. <sighs> proud? Well, proud of him? You, you hear that? He, what, he's proud of this little son loser? Rather than ever mentioning the big Titans release party Hades has planned and using that as a reason the god of the underworld wants Wonder Boy dead, we instead have him trying to keep his nephew from ruining whatever the plot of the day is. Also, Zeus is like totally cool with Hades, I guess, trying to murder his son constantly. So I guess that's pretty Greek. That's pretty mythological of them. But if you can get past the show ignoring everything about the plot of the film, then you're good to go. The show does do some fun things. Well, I'm not entirely crazy about either of the best friends, Cassandra, based on the oracle of the same name, or Icarus, who serves to show what can happen to your brain when you fly too close to the sun. The deities and other famous figures, I think, are done really well. Aphrodite, 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 Aphrodite. Oh, good goddess, could you kind of hurry? I'm trying to get out of here. Aphrodite is a standout. The fact that the Pygmalion myth is included is really cool. And each episode does have a musical number. So, if you're into that sort of thing, there's that. Also, the cast list 
is crazy. We have James Woods returning as Hades, and love him or hate him, he's perfect for Hades. Rip Torn Soundalike is crazy spot on. We even have Susan Egan popping back in to play Meg, and Tate Donovan's back as Herc. Which honestly, I think that's a really weird choice because young Herc was played by Josh Keaton and his young singing voice was Roger Bart. But hey, Tate Donovan was more famous and he played the grown up Herc, so sure, that works. The dude who was his little voice too plays Shiro in Voltron. That guy's amazing. And Roger Bart, he was Snoopy in the musical year Good Man Charlie Brown. He was the really f***ed up pharmacist on Desperate Housewives. Incredible. Oh, yeah, you know that, that I know that guy. Really the guest voices on this show are insane. This list is the most 90s thing you've heard since you booted up Windows 98. Jennifer Jason Lee, Jody Benson, who played Ariel in The Little Mermaid, Jason Alexander, Tom Arnold, Linda Hamilton, Dom DeLuise, Joey Lauren Adams, Lisa Kudrow, Jennifer Aniston, and way more. It's because Jennifer Aniston was dating Tate Donovan at this time. He played, he played Joshua on Friends. I know a lot about 90s trivia. There's even a pre-frozen post-rent Adina Menzel playing Cersei and singing. What a good man is all that I need. And for folks like me who have worked for the mouse, there's even inside jokes and jabs taken at Disney. Please. <laughs> we're a first name only kind of place. <laughs> yeah, and we're not employees. We're cast members. <sighs> Some standout episodes are the Dream Date, which is where the Pygmalion myth I mentioned is featured. Now this was a Valentine's Day special and consequently, the animation quality is stepped up a notch. Aphrodite, played by Lisa Kudrow, is so fun. Personality? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, just make her uh, crazy about me. Oh, okay, so beautiful and crazy about you. Good, digging deep, huh? And it takes a super common high school trope and makes it much more interesting than the usual I can't find a date bummer storyline. A, a little more curvy? Uh, okay, that's curvy enough for you, young man. She made Hercules a sex doll? Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Here's a buddy. Made out of Play-Doh. Plus, it features probably one of the best lines in the entire series. So, where's your clay made of the month? Right behind me. Be nice, okay? The Gorgon is another great one and features Medusa, ending the episode with Medusa and Hercules going out on a date. We only see her this one time and the following episode is the finale, which I think is a real shame. It would have been so interesting to see how that relationship dynamic would have worked out. Probably not well since we see him beating up a big old Gorgon in Zero to Hero. I know spending time on a love interest you know a character isn't going to end up with can be really tedious. Look at you, Smallville. We know he's gonna be with Lois. Speed it up. But I thought that this could have had some unique storytelling opportunities. And since we do know who Herc ends up with, let's talk about Meg's inclusion in the TV show. I was so confused when she showed up. As we know, Hercules doesn't meet Meg until he's completed his hero training, and hears her struggling with that creepy centaur river guardian. The show has Herc meeting Meg, who hires him to retrieve an amphora. Huh? I uh, hear you're a hero. Wanna prove it? Inside the amphora is Lethe water, water from the underworld that can erase a memory. She wants to use it to forget Adonis, Hercules' school rival who she went on one blind date with. The series then, using this memory wiping device, instead has Meg and Herc forget they ever spent time with one another, but not before the two confess they both caught feelings. Forget it, Wonder Boy. I liked you from the beginning. I was, I was just afraid that if you knew the truth about me, you wouldn't want to help. Really? So, Meg doesn't get to wipe Adonis from her brain, thus leading many to speculate that Adonis is the ex-boyfriend Meg sold her soul for. We'll also see adult Meg in the yearbook clip compilation episode. Much like Aladdin the series, this episode shows us the couple post happily ever after. What's that? Well, when I figured out what you were up to, I sent Hermes on a special mission to retrieve your high school yearbook. No, you wouldn't. It's great to see the two still wanting to impress each other, chemistry, and just how they're existing in suburban Thebes together post Hades treachery. Now, because this seems to be the episode that really stuck in viewers' minds, let's talk Arabian Night, the crossover episode that featured Aladdin and the gang. Hercules! It takes a lot of nerve to kidnap someone's best friend. <laughs> Nobody knows that better than you, Aladdin! Honestly, guys, this episode is bonkers. First of all, there's Jafar saying there's been a grave mistake when he shows up in the underworld, which is hilarious. Are you in charge here? 
Hades, Lord of the Underworld, how you doing? Your host with the ghost. Ha, <laughs> Tom. You see, there's been a grievous error. Not only does he feel like he should not be dead, he's in a Grecian understanding of the afterlife. Like, oh, that is a brilliant joke about cultural expectations about death. In a kid's show. Does that make the Hades Underworld canon for all Disney <gasps> villains? Do all Disney villains end up in Hades? Maybe. I'm trying to think of other movies where there's an afterlife. Because All Dogs Go to Heaven is Don Bluth, so that doesn't count. And Princess and the Frog, when that one dude dies, he becomes a firefly. Maybe. Oh, shit. Send your theories. Aladdin, now married to Princess Jasmine and next in line for the throne, is still kicking it with his crew on the streets of Agrabah, working as vigilantes to keep those crime rates down. He does finally get new clothes, and I'm going to assume lives with his wife in the palace. Finally. Still probably doesn't have nipples, though. Kirk and Aladdin are manipulated by Jafar and Hades to fight each other. After their best buds, Abu and Icarus are both kidnapped thanks to banana lores. Because the boys finally use their voices instead of brute strength or Aladdin's superpower, witty comebacks. <laughs> if you get your hands on me, jerkulees. <laughs> you know, everybody thinks of being clever when they call me that, but it's not. They realize they've been duped and head to the underworld to save their friends and do this ridiculous disguise change. How did the pants happen? I love animation. Good plan, Herc. Phil will be proud. Ugh, that's just fine, you know? I mean, I knew that Jafar guy was a jerk. Honestly, all I could think the whole time was, is this episode why Kingdom Hearts happened? What, Hashimoto and Nomura did a bunch of acid while watching the one Saturday morning lineup? I'd love to know why this is the episode that really resonated with everyone. Was it just because of the hero team up? Thanks a lot, Hercules. You're gonna be one great hero. Uh, thanks, Aladdin. Coming from you, that means a lot. If you're ever in Agrabah, look us up. What do you remember about the Hercules animated series? Anything I left out? Let me know in the comments down below. While the series definitely had major flaws, I know I had fun revisiting this one and can't wait to dive into the next Disney cartoon. For more throwbacks, deep dives, lore, and more, just click to the left of my face, or you can check us out on Roku or Plex. Again, thanks to all of our sponsors on Patreon, and thank you for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.